<laughs> Our guests in this first segment, uh, former teacher in the Berkeley County School System, frequent guest in this program, <laughs> and a Bengals fan. Yes. But despite all that, she's a good person. Julie Abel, good morning, Julie. A <laughs> good person she is. Yeah. I am. <laughs> I, I, I get, actually get to see a game this year. Are you going to Cincinnati or are they coming here? No, we are, we're going to the uh, Giants. Meadowlands. Yeah. We're, we're going. It's a Sunday night game in October. We're going to take the kids and go mm. see the Bengals in, in Jersey. What game will Joe Burrow get hurt in this year? Stop. Stop. <laughs> it's not happening. Uh, uh, Dylan says seven. Game by way. Week seven, no more Joe Burrow. <laughs> Bad luck. That guy's a great quarterback. He just can't finish the season healthy or start one healthy. We're, we're, we're going to be healed, and we are on, on the right track. He even changed the haircut. He's, so. he's due. Yeah. He's definitely due to be healthy. Yeah. All right, you have a young lady beside you, too, who is a junior at Musselman High School. Yes, this is Nadia Maidensbacher. Nadia, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So how's this junior year thing going for you? I'm excited to finally start the school year. It's been a long summer. Yeah. And ready to get back into sports. I play soccer. Um, yeah. We had a long summer training. but. What uh, position do you play in soccer? I honestly play all around. I... Prefer defensive area though. Middle or the, or the wing? Middle. Middle? Okay. You throw those elbows in there a little bit? Oh, yeah. You, you always shot? have to. Yeah. <laughs> they say football's a physical sport, but soccer's in there too. <laughs> yeah, you know, and here's, I, I coached soccer at the youth level. My boys played youth soccer. And I also I played football when I was in high school, and I coach football now. And, and so many people say soccer is not a f contact sport. And to them, I say, why don't you go play with a high school team? <laughs> Just once run around out there with them. Try to go down the middle and, and, and tell me if you think it's a contact sport after that, right? Oh, yeah. It is physical. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Also, you run this. track too, right? I do. Yeah, what do you run in track? I run a lot of mid-distance, a lot of 400s and 800s, and then I also do a lot of long jumps, so jumping into sand, even when we're not at the beach. Yeah, <laughs> well, you get to uh, write up your vacations as a training expense. You go to the beach, oh, yeah. take a running leap. Enjoy the rest of your week. I always feel like Spider-Man after nice. um, he fights Sandman because he just dumps out his boots and there's a bunch of sand coming through. All the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder that watching the Olympic long jumps, you know, the long jumping competition, and, I mean, it's a full sprint, and then you fly and you land right on your butt in that sand. At some point, you got to lose some skin. <laughs> sand is well, not soft. It's an abrasive. No, and it honestly depends on what pit you go into because some of the sand just turns all of your clothes to brown. Yeah. It looks like you're just playing in the dirt. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I know you're a ways away from track season, but soccer is just around the corner here. So good luck to you this year. But it is not your athletic abilities of which we speak this morning. It is not. You were at the Governor's School of the Arts. What is that, and, and what, uh, what was your involvement in that? So the Governor's School, um, they have multiple programs. I believe it's like seven or eight in West Virginia. They... The legislator, the West Virginia legislator, pays for students to go here um, to all of these schools to focus on maybe what they're interested in the future. Mm -hmm. Like for the Governor's School of Arts, we do a lot of the creative arts there, whether it's visual, creative writing, vocal music, and instrumental, and even dancing. Mm -hmm. And you get to focus then on those disciplines with very professional, like, master degree even phd level teachers that help teach you and get yourself more involved in that major that you even might go to college for and what was your discipline my discipline was creative writing so you are a younger female version of john <laughs> gilstrap basically Maybe one day I'll also be on the University of I actually I taught think. at the Virginia Governor's School for a number of years, so I think five or six consecutive years in the early aughts. And I found, same program, same kind of program, and I found the, the dedication of those students and the freedom. I, I don't know if the programs are exactly the same, mm -hmm. but, but there it was a residential program where the kids were kind of given the freedom to just be artists and yeah. without the constraints of sort of being embarrassed about being artists. And I, I was terribly impressed by what, I shouldn't put it terribly, just remarkably impressed by the creativity that came out. And one of the most impressive moments, actually dancing was part of that program. And 
I was there both as a teacher, but also kind of like this, the, the celebrity go between because of what I was doing. And I, I went to the dance class and they did kind of an improv dance based on a topic that I gave them. And the, the topic was, you know, of the, I don't know how many kids with like 10 or 11 kids in, in this class. And it's the day you get your acceptance letter from college. Everybody gets their acceptance letter from college and all but one get their, their, their acceptance letter. So they interpreted this through dance. And it was really moving to see mm -hmm. what these kids can do. First of all, the body movement and just, just the raw emotion of, of your age group. I, this is not my interview, but it's really a, a yeah. great supporter of these programs. Oh, that's a cool story. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know it's not your interview, but it's very curious. Did you teach dance? Or did you no, God, no. Dance? <laughs> no. No, I was doing, actually, I was more in, in the film writing program, but there was a creative writing program as well. Okay. John was a singer, but not a dancer. Yes, I knew that part of it. Yeah. He, now, I'm definitely not billed as a dancer or a track yeah. star. Yeah. Now, <laughs> you sang with John Wayne, did you not? I did. Yeah, that's a different <laughs> yeah. story. But yeah. Yeah. Among others, I might have. Going well, back. I, I think uh, Nadia got experience in all, like, creative yeah. writing was yeah. her field, but she got to do a little bit of dance. And Did you rotate through everything? Yeah, they wanted, like, arts to be able to collaborate, and then they wanted you to be able to try out all of the arts and honestly most of the people going there like I had multiple people in my group that were all creative writers but then half of them did, were in band or half of them were in theater and we're all just very well-rounded people yeah. and in the arts. Hey, Rob did you notice how skill, skillfully Julie shifted the spotlight away from John Gale's As she should have. Should yeah. Yeah. I, was, so, I was going to compliment her on that myself. Yes. <laughs> so how did that work? Were you workshopping a story you already had written or did you start it there is it based on prompts how did that work um it's very hard to like workshop an entire piece just because they're so long but a lot of times it would be shorter prompts and then we'd also just get individual feedback but we did a lot of just sitting in a circle and reading writing and talking about the writing for well, very long period julie of time. how do you factor into this um well for my surprise, uh, Nadia nominated me as her mentor. So the school contacted me over the summer and asked if I would come uh, to a mentor's luncheon. And, and I was very pleased to have been nominated by Nadia. I had no idea. And that was exciting. I had Nadia in middle school um, in art. Yep. And she is definitely an artist as well as a creative writer. And uh, she was in my art club for three years. So we got to know each other pretty well. And so I was very pleasantly surprised to be nominated by well, her. What, was, you, what yeah. was the physical location of the Governor's School for Arts? It's at Wesleyan for the next two years. So it was at Wesleyan this year, and then the next two years it'll also be at West Virginia Wesleyan. And how were you selected? Out of how many applicants, how were you selected? I don't, I don't know how many applicants applied. Um, you, of course, had to apply to your individual mm -hmm. field that you're trying to major in for that discipline. Um, but it was a very long application process. You had like to have two references, write an essay here, and then talk about maybe your service mm -hmm. that you've done mm -hmm. and just get like multiple signatures and such. Sure. And I've written letters before, like Nadia didn't ask me to write a letter for her, but I've nominated other kids who wanted to go for art in the past. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had several students attend um, the governor's school, sure. um, but mostly th for art. <laughs> so as the mentor did you were you resident for three weeks at the governor's school as well <laughs> no unfortunately i was not i would have enjoyed that though but <laughs> no i was working and you know family um all that but i got to uh go to a dinner a luncheon um at wesleyan and they read a little spiel about me that nadia wrote <laughs> and um you know, did a slideshow with everybody who was present. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the afternoon, you could go to workshops with the student. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, when I found out about being nominated, um, I already had plans that day. We, we had <laughs> tickets to go see the Outlaw Fest at Hershey Park. So yeah. I went from Wesleyan yeah. straight to Hershey to meet my husband. And that's when we enjoyed a little music to, <laughs> to top our day off. So. Long drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, during your three weeks there, I'm sure there were a lot of high spots, uh, high points, but was there any particular one that you're particularly memorable that you uh, came back really, really been felt you've been blown away with? 
we took a trip to dc okay very very early wake-up call for that but um we got to see a lot of the museums and just walk around and be with all of our people because three weeks you didn't know anyone when you first came into wesleyan and then by the end of it everyone's crying and hugging yeah. each other and it's a lot like the this show <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. a crying lot of a lot yeah. of crying yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, was there any particular particular instructors that you were uh, very impressed with or did you have one instructor one primary or were there series of instructors it depended sometimes on your discipline but for the writers we had two instructors one for poetry and one more so for um, like long short stories does it is the same skill set, and I asked John as well, for poetry is what it is, uh, a prose? Do you it find a often lot? often yeah. inter- entwines because I went for prose, but I've written poetry plenty of times before, and it just helps out with your descriptions then, and I feel like your creativity if you were to also dabble in poetry, I feel like. Do you find one more difficult than the other to write, to write in? I feel like it depends sometimes on you as a person, but I feel like it also depends on my mood than when I am writing, if I want to focus more on fully writing out a story or if I just want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> Have you ever written prose, John? Prose? I've no, 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 I'm it. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Have you ever written poetry? poetry? Uh, way back in the day, not, yeah. not, in, not in my adult life. The, so in your creative writing class, are we talking rough class size? We had eight people. So there are eight people. We were the smallest discipline. Different genres? It was between um, poetry and prose, but... Um, well, for the prose writers. Mostly, um, you had a lot of people that were into more realistic fiction, but then a lot of people that were into more so writing fantasy and just world building on that. So of the eight, there were the poetry and, and prose were split between the eight? We had two people go for poetry and six go for prose. Okay. There. Were there many local kids uh, there with you? Not we yet? we had kids from around the entire state. There's probably only about one or two that came directly from Buchanan, I would say. But oh, I meant by local, I meant Berkeley or Jefferson County Berkeley. kids. Okay. Um, we had four, including myself, come from Musselman. We had multiple go then from the Eastern Panhandle, though, because... A lot of people I talked to would say they're from the Eastern Panhandle, which I thought was cool since if I ever wanted to meet up with them, I didn't have to drive three hours. <laughs> that helps. That's nice. uh, why is Julie Abel your mentor? Why did you select her? I feel like um, art is a collaboration. And like, wow, she wasn't the one that taught me all about creative writing. She was the one that gave me this special space, especially during the COVID years where I could express myself. COVID years were like really hard for students in school because we didn't have a lot of time to just be around people and in a community. But she opened up the art club during lunches where even though we were all wearing masks, we could still talk to each other while then working on our art projects and such. When I was in high school, there was a teacher named Richard Altamari and he was also my running backs coach when I was on the football team, but I had him for what was then called visual communications classes. And he was the one as a teacher who saw that I had some interest and abilities in this field and steered me in that direction and allowed me to do a lot of stuff with the, uh, the uh, what was effectively like a TV station within the high school. Uh, nowhere on the level that Musselman has. This was back in the 70s when we still had giant video cassette. Uh, players and what have you Uh, but when he retired I was asked to write something about him which I did I effectively said how do you how do you thank someone that you owe your career to and he wrote me back a note that said he was just blown away by the credit I was giving him and as a teacher Julie you're on the end of receiving those kind of notes to know the kind of effect that you have on young people and sometimes years later, you might think to yourself, I, all I did was say, do, you know, do this or do that or guide them. But it's amazing the, the kind of influence and power a teacher can have over a child I mean, in a good way. Yeah, and it, I was just very honored. And um, it was hard. The, the COVID years were very, very hard. 
And um, I kind of, I mean, I didn't get paid for the time that I had that art club because that was my planning time. Um, but I did it because I felt like I needed it. I needed that connection with the kids. I missed my art club and the bond that we had. And um, I just wanted to make sure it happened for them because it was just such a scary and, I don't know, difficult mentally um, with mental mental health. Uh, it was a difficult time for everybody. And so my art club was always like sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And it was probably the only time in the day that they were allowed to be in the same room together um, and work together. And I felt like they were, it just made a really good community. They were always inspired by each other and I liked having them at different age levels so that they could collaborate. And uh, we had Sophie on here before. Um, Sophie is one of, Sophie Carpenter is one of uh, Nadia's really good friends. And just working with kids like them are, it's just, it just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, they inspire you and they're what keep you going in those times too. You know, you're giving up your extra time, you're giving up time that you're not getting paid, time that you could be doing other things. but. It was just something that I needed um, mentally myself to keep going, and I'm glad that it was a safe space for the students as well. And I've had multiple students that have said things like that. They just didn't have a stage, I guess, where they um, nominated me, but they you know, told me in private or wrote me letters. And I've even had a couple parents from that time period that reached out to me and they were like, you can't even imagine what you did for my kid at that time. Um, and so, you know, it's great. I mean, it's, you don't do it for those reasons, but it is, it is very intrinsically motivating. Yeah. You use the term, uh, scary. And I think as an adult, if you had a perspective to put it in as being scary as a student, you had not really been through anything like this before. Did you see it as a scary time? Not a... I think it was, you and were especially scary, yeah. right at the start, all that yeah. unknown feeling mm -hmm. about the pandemic. Obviously, then towards the end of seventh grade, you, you became you adjusted to it, yeah. And it was yeah. just like, why are you locking me up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was confining, I think. Yeah. And so finding a safe space for us to be creative sure. when we were indoors and we would use our outdoor space when yeah. it was um, appropriate. It just, you know, I did bring together a group of very special people uh, during that time period that I, I will never forget. Um, so it's, it's really an honor to have worked with Nadia at that time. You know, when times get tough <clears throat> and budgets get tight, <laughs> we often, certainly politicians often look at the arts as expendable. We really need to start looking at schools as all STEM program and as sort of as vocational schools. How are we going to make a living, teach people how to make a living? Give us a couple minutes or whatever on the importance of art to you, your development as, as a young lady and and from what you've observed as a teacher? I feel like it's very hard to try to pursue the arts in the world we have when you don't have really jobs paying high money for you. Like, if you want to be able to make it, I feel like in the world of writing, you have to be on the sellers list, like really high up there. Um, so it's hard to then want to pursue a career myself in the arts, and I think that's how a lot of people feel in the entire art field. So I think being able to have the governor's school, how West Virginia legislators think it's important enough to continue to pay for that for all of the students is important because we're trying to understand that there are ways to pursue what we dream of because my biggest dream is writing, but can I really pursue that and still make a healthy living is, I think, the biggest question in today's society. Well, if it helps, I was 38 before I published my first book. So <laughs> was, how about you, Julie? And you've had a short story published already. Yes, now, yes right? in the anthology of Appalachian writers. That was really high honor for me. You know, cool. What has been uh, well, Hold on, Julie didn't get a chance to answer the question. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah. Sorry, Jill, I was sure. just going to say that uh, during that time period, Nadia also got to experience when I started the STEAM Club for us. Um, I had done some grant writing with one of her other favorite teachers who actually inspired, inspired a lot of her creative writing, and that was uh, Mr. Perkins. He was her gifted teacher at the time. And we collaborated to fund and get 3D printers and a lot of. Um, 
Arduino and lots of different uh, projects. And so I had kind of two clubs going at once. And um, Nadia was a part of both of those clubs. And I, I think that's where sometimes people say STEM and then they want to cut the art out of it. I feel like art is a big part of STEM. Um, and it's the design, the problem solving, the creative thinking that goes into it. If you look at a lot of, I've always seen it as Nobel Peace Prize winners, you know, scientists, these famous people who've won in their field of study, if you actually look at their background, many of them have an art that they are really proficient at, whether it's strings, and Nadia is also a gifted um, violin player. Violin, right? Or do mm -hmm. you know? okay. Violin. Yeah. So strings or art or, you know, they use that as their outlet. And if you have training in that area, I think it only enhances your thinking in the sciences or whatever field you take it into. So I think that's the way I always saw school, you know, for students like Nadia is I just wanted to provide as many opportunities for them to be creative and stretch themselves. And um, so I was excited to have worked with some really great teachers and bring those programs to the school. About 60 seconds left. Bill, your question? Yeah, uh, it was kind of a statement as much as anything. Uh, with the pressure on our legislators to cut the budget, reduce the budget, a lot of things are put on the chopping block. Yet what you're mentioning today, the arts and especially the governor's school, is something that might be threatened on the chopping block, but yet you explained it and described it in such a way uh, the criticality, the value of the course. Nadia, great stuff. Thank you so much for coming in. Julie, wonderful to see you again, and a wonderful uh, selection here with Nadia, too. Were you, were you read to a lot as a kid, or did you do a lot of reading as a kid, Nadia? I was read to a lot and then proceeded to read a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Parents, read to your children. Yeah. Just uh, can't uh, stress the importance of that enough. Read to your children. Read aloud, yeah. Have a great junior. Will you be a senior? Junior. Junior. Have a great junior year. Thank you. All right, good luck in soccer and such. <laughs> Julie? Back to work for you. I know. <laughs>